The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department was created 50 years ago when the Game and Fish Commission and State Parks Board were merged. To mark this anniversary, we take a look through the archives to see how things have changed and stayed the same across the decades. As old trout fisherman once said that trout, unlike men, cannot live except where beauty dwells, so that any man who would catch a trout finds himself surrounded by beauty. No one would have guessed several years ago that rainbow trout could ever be caught in Texas. Summer waters were much too warm for trout. But a trout fishery has existed in a short section of the Guadalupe River near New Braunfels since 1966. A side benefit in the building of a reservoir solved the warm water problem. Canyon Dam rises more than 220 feet above the stream bed. But instead of the traditional floodgate and spillway arrangement, release of water from 150 feet below the surface is through the tail reef. Hi, I'm Marco de Jesus with Texas Parks and Wildlife. I'm an inland fisheries biologist. That water being released back there is what makes trout fishing so good in the canyon tail race. It's been providing great fishing for many years. It was good back then, and it's great today. <laughs> for the next 11 miles, the water remains cool year round, with a low of 49 degrees in February to a high of 68 in July. Enough larval aquatic insects, crustaceans, small fish, and plant life exists to provide a well-balanced trout diet. With this information, Parks and Wildlife Department biologists stocked the first shipment of 3,000 rainbows in April 1966. In the next three years, 30,000 fish from six to eight inches long were stocked. These fish were purchased from a trout farm in Missouri by Lone Star Brewery in San Antonio. There go the fish. <laughs> there they go. That's great. <laughs> Nowadays, thanks to ongoing partnerships, we stock close to 30,000 rainbow trout in the Guadalupe River. They used to be six to eight inches back then. Today, they're eight to 10 inches, and they still come from Missouri. For statistical purposes, each shipment had a different fin clipped for identification. A certain percentage had spaghetti tags installed. Fishermen who catch tagged fish are urged to turn in information on their catch. Since biological studies have proven that a trout fishery is feasible, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has agreed to provide 10,000 trout each year for stocking. These trout are raised in the federal fish hatchery in Mescalero, New Mexico, and brought in by truck. The fish are released at areas which are open to the public. But like other wildlife species, the newly stocked trout will migrate up or downstream to any area they prefer. With cat-like hardiness, the trout suffer no apparent ill effects from the drop. One western state does most of its stocking from an airplane. Access to the river is a problem, since much of the land is under private ownership and is not open to fishermen. However, fishermen may freely enter on U.S. Corps of Engineers property below the dam and along highway rights of way. Some landowners charge nominal fees for use of fishing camps, which have picnic facilities and access to the river. 
The stream bed, of course, belongs to the state of Texas and is open to the public for float or wade fishing. If you've never fished the river before, it's best to ask directions at local cafes, service stations, and tackle shops. Nowadays, the Army Corps of Engineers still provides free public access below the dam. <laughs> but even better, private outfitters also provide opportunities for the anglers to get in free to fish for rainbow trout. All right, here we go. Little bitty guy. <laughs> trout mature in about three years. In spring, the female deposits her eggs in a nest which she fanned along a gravel bottom. After fertilization, the eggs are covered until they hatch. Biologists do not know if the rainbow will spawn and reproduce in the Guadalupe. If they do, then Texas fishermen will get a bonus. Other states have found that the normal spawn is not enough to fill the demands of fishermen. These states stock yearly with hatchery fish to supplement regular spawns. If the Guadalupe rainbows do not spawn, the river will still be a quality put-and-take trout fishery. Many other states operate similar trout fisheries since they provide high-quality outdoor recreation at a reasonable cost. Rainbow fry are relatively easy and inexpensive to produce under hatchery conditions. Just because the trout were raised in a hatchery, don't expect them to be tame or dumb. Once on the hook, they put up as much fight as those born in the wild. What's neat about this is we started this fishery almost 50 years ago, and still today it's going strong, providing great fishing opportunities for people here in Texas. We want to see this great fishing opportunity continue to happen for another 50 years. In these days of complex living, crowded cities, and urban sprawl, man needs time like never before to get away from it all, to think his thoughts, and places actions in perspective. The wise old fisherman, who was a Michigan Supreme Court justice and popular novelist when he was not chasing trout, was right. The basic needs of trout are found only where there is natural beauty. As long as this beauty survives along the Guadalupe, so will the trout. Man himself can survive without beauty, or rainbow trout either. But isn't it better that we don't have to?